Hey everyone, what's crackalackin'? My name's Amal and you're watching Newsbreak. Well, the weather has been getting pretty chilly and the days have been getting really short. What? Already? <sighs> there we go. Yeah, today is something called the winter solstice, which also means it's the shortest day of the year. This has got to be the longest night in the year. Yeah, well, it is. How long has it been? 14 hours. It's pretty long. <laughs> I remember the sun like a distant memory. Its rays shining meekly over the horizon. Light and warmth. You know, it's not gone forever, right? This is just because our part of the world's reached its maximum tilt away from the sun. It'll, it'll come back. Yeah, I knew that. Um, maybe we could do something to pass the time. <laughs> like? This book here. Something good in here. Oh, in Antarctica, there's a bit of a tradition for going for an icy swim. What? Oh, and uh, in Tasmania, it looks like they do the same thing, except in the nude. Oh, well, that's not happening. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, what about a yuzu bath in Japan? There's warm water, there's citrus fruits and capybaras. I'm not going for a swim. Noted. Lighting lanterns. Oh. Yeah. Made to look like clocks and we have to burn them in a massive bonfire at the end of it. Why? Why is that a tradition? In England, I think it's supposed to symbolise all our hopes and fears. What? And we burn them? Mm. Oh. Want to know some winter solstice fun facts? No. So, Stonehenge was built to align with the winter solstice sunrise. And this other place in Ireland called Newgrange was built to align with winter solstice's sunset. Which, without the modern tools and measurements we have today, would have been a really hard thing to pull off. Like, why would they do it, right? Right. Would you like me to just leave you alone? Yeah, that'd be good, thanks. Pretty cool, though. Hmm. Now we're about to meet the artist behind this piece of art. Art! No, really, that's his name. The 12-year-old artist from New South Wales just had his first solo show, which he sold out. Gladys caught up with him. Hmm. Some have cat ears and crocodile teeth. Others have eight toes and four arms. These are just some of the incredible artworks created by Art. Art Tui is 12, and he recently finished his first ever solo art exhibition. I sold um, 19 pieces in my exhibition. So it was a sellout show. It was really, I was really excited about it. Did you already have all the work ready like to go or did you have to start drawing once you knew the exhibition was coming? Oh, I had to start drawing. One weekend I had to draw six pieces. So was that stressful? That was <laughs> super stressful. As stressful as it was, Art's hard work paid off. Some of his work is now hanging in a restaurant in Canberra. When I was younger, my mum and dad helped me because they're both artists too. And can you tell us a bit more about some of the other influences that you have as well? Mainly Picasso and Basquiat, they just, it's different to others, it's just very abstract and they really don't care what other people think about it. Um, in the process of getting an online store, it'll, it'll soon be here. There'll be a lot, a lot of drawing on it. Ah. You know, these days people are always trying to come out with new technology and inventions and other cool stuff, but honestly, nothing beats natural wonders. Thank you. See, it's so pretty. Coming in at almost four metres tall and a whopping 300 kilograms, this is the biggest freshwater fish ever recorded. A team of researchers and fishermen caught this giant stingray in the Mekong River, Cambodia, and the whole discovery is, well, very exciting. In life, it's important to stop and smell the roses. And here in Genzano, Italy, well, you can stop and smell the petals. Locals use 350,000 flowers to make this massive parade of colour, as well as seeds, bark and even rice. Finally, it's time to meet Jenny, the albino otter. A fisherman spotted her in the Tigris River, Iraq, and after posting a video online, he found out Jenny isn't just cute, she's super rare. This is only the second time an albino Eurasian otter has ever been seen in the wild. So green, so pretty. Oh, well naturally, that's the end of the show. Bye!